Tudor fever is just a, the um, it's just the common name for a particular type of allergy. So allergies being uh, uh, this this condition, it's a form of rhinitis or nose inflammation. Usually, it's induced by something irritating that you uh, that you inhale from the environment. Often, it's due to pollen, but there are many, 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 many things that can induce allergic rhinitis. Again, this is just a special form, and it's caused by the pollen of, again, the common name is the cedar, mountain cedar. It's actually not a cedar, though. It's a juniper tree. It grows in central uh, Texas, uh, but that pollen is produced in absolutely huge amounts. And in the windstorms that they often uh, uh, crop up in the winter, those those uh, fronts, frontal systems, can bring that pollen all the way as far east as Houston. Cedar fever is a bit of a misnomer because it's not uh, typically does not cause a fever, and it's not caused by cedars. Truly, it's caused by something. Uh, there are trees called ash junipers uh, for most of Texas. Uh, another related species called eastern red cedar. And what it is is it's really an allergic reaction. These trees this time of year are releasing pollen into the air. And when that pollen enters your body, it triggers a histamine response, just like really any kind of allergic reaction. And you'll respond with itchy, watery eyes, runny nose, sore throat, cough, those kinds of symptoms is what you typically see with cedar fever. So cedar fever is really having an allergic reaction to the pollen from these trees. It's the, the ash juniper trees. Um, and so, these, it's basically an allergic reaction to pollen, which many of us can get at different times of the year. Um, and so you'll see sometimes these trees with these clouds of smoke or puffs of smoke coming from them. And I think we've seen certainly videos um, on the internet about this as well. So that's what that pollen is. There's not much pollen in the air in the winter. Uh, uh, so r roughly mid-January to mid-February is cedar uh, fever season. The, really, the only pollen that's in the air is, is cedar, but again, it's not cedar, it's juniper. Hardest hit area is, is really central Texas uh, into north central Texas. So really the, the I-35 corridor and points just west of that. And the reason being that is the part of the state that has the most juniper trees in it. Uh, junipers cover uh, about 63 million acres in Texas, over a third of the state but it's really that corridor to I-35 and just west that has the biggest problem. But you can get it anywhere in Texas because the pollen is windblown. Uh, it can really travel long distances. In fact, they've tracked pollen from central Texas all the way up to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So really no one is outside of the range where it could possibly occur. Basically, the symptoms of cedar fever are going to be similar and pretty typical of any other types of allergic environmental allergy symptoms. So a lot of runny nose, itchy, watery eyes. You may have a sore throat because of the post-nasal drip. Um, not really as common to cause fever, although somebody, if they have really severe allergies, might certainly have a low-grade temperature. But pretty much these typical allergy symptoms of itchy, watery eyes, and runny nose. Cedar uh, is gonna feel like a really bad allergy attack. You're gonna, you're gonna often feel malaise, uh, and you're gonna experience a lot of sneezing, itchy, watery eyes, runny nose. You can have some cough, and you can have some shortness of breath. But although it's called cedar fever, it's very unusual, if not, you know, it'd be unprecedented almost, to actually have fever with, with cedar fever. So in contrast, so uh, and you're not necessarily going to get to lose your sense of smell. You may have some reduction in your sense of smell because of all just you know all the liquid that's coming out of your nose that, that prevents you from you know uh, uh, plugs up your nose. Uh, but in COVID-19, um, the first thing you may experience is loss of uh, sense of smell, uh, including complete loss that may be accompanied by sore throat. Um, and cough uh, with fever, definitely with fever, in addition to the, to, to the malaise. So there's a tremendous amount of overlap between these two, um, but if you're having fever and you're really having a severe um, malaise with uh, cough and, and, and sore throat, that's much more likely to be COVID-19.
early on in the pandemic, we were seeing much more distinctive COVID symptoms with fever, loss of taste and smell, cough, you know, um, significant muscle aches and fatigue. I think that over time, the symptoms have continued to evolve. We've not seen loss of sense of sense of taste or smell as much with Delta. And some of the early reports with Omicron are that the symptoms might actually be milder to begin with at least. So we are hearing about sore throat, runny nose, cough, um, you know, not necessarily the itchy watery eyes, but you can certainly still have some of the muscle aches and the fatigue. So I think there's going to be a fair amount of overlap between what we are seeing right now with Delta as well as, um, you know, between that and symptoms of cedar fever. You should be able to reach a, readily reach a decision as to whether to just take your antihistamines in the, in the, in the context of a probable cedar fever um, or, um, or go for that COVID-19 uh, test. If you think you have cedar fever, the uh, kind of some of the easiest things you can do are to take some kind of an allergy medicine. I'm doing that right now. I've had allergy symptoms for over a week. I'm taking a daily allergy medicine. Uh, there are nasal sprays available over the counter. And if you're not getting relief from those kind of products, I'd recommend going to the doctor, uh, maybe seeing if there's further treatment, uh, prescription allergy medications, things like that you, that you could take it. If you're somebody who really does not or has never had experiences with cedar fever in the past, you've never really had allergies to that. And then this time of the year, you're starting to experience that it could certainly still be cedar fever, but there might be a bigger chance that you actually have COVID or some other type of a respiratory virus. So we think about that. We think also about whether the symptoms seem worse for you than normal. You know, is it something that, you know, typically it's milder symptoms with cedar fever, you take some over the counter allergy medication and you can manage to get through your day, but yet this time it just seems different. So if it's something feels different, those are things to consider with, with COVID as well. The only real way to know if you have COVID or not is really to get tested. Um, and I think that, you know, if, you're, if you've been out and about in public, if you've had any types of exposures um, to people with COVID and, you know, either in proximity or in a large gathering and those types of behaviors that might put you at a higher risk of being exposed to COVID, it certainly needs to be on your mind as part of the differential. If you really think it's cedar fever, again, the best way to manage that is the standard antihistamines uh, and ne no, uh, steroid nasal sprays are highly effective. You may need to take, because this pollen is, it elicits such an intense reaction, you may need a little bit more antihistamine. So the typical directions are to take one pill a day, depending on what uh, what, what actual antihistamine uh, you're, you have. Uh, but you may need, for short periods of time, need to take that at double. And under medical supervision, I would, I would definitely consult with your your favorite physician, primary care or allergist, uh, but you might need up to three doses per day, even higher. But I would not recommend that without medical um, uh, approval from, from a from a trusted physician. Those higher doses, but that can be the trick to surviving a really bad uh, month, up to a month of cedar fever. It's just higher doses, even more than what's typically recommended. Again, I would recommend a physician's input if you want to go to those higher doses. The responses to allergens are really so individual. It's, it's really hard to say. Uh, some folks have really, really bad responses. Other folks could live in Texas their whole life, never be affected by this, this annual occurrence. So it's really hard to say who is gonna be hit the hardest. Uh, from personal experience, I'll tell you that I grew up in Central Texas. I never really had an issue with it until I moved away for a few years. And when I came back, it's been pretty much every winter ever since I've been getting sooner over-the-counter allergy medication. Um, you know, it's probably worthwhile having a conversation with your primary care doctor um, or even an allergy specialist if that's somebody that, you know, you've seen in the past or you might need to see moving forward. So they certainly might have some additional recommendations about whether or not the steroid nose sprays might be effective or are there other types of stronger allergy medications that you can take. The main thing though is that if you do have a runny nose and a cough, to keep your fluids contained, you know? So if you are coughing or sneezing, do that in your elbow, washing your hands meticulously, using hand hygiene. And of course, you know, if you're not certain, just always keep a mask on, especially when you're around others who, um, you know, at work or at school or out in public. Two points I would hit on 
One is with the concern about uh, COVID-19 this year, if you are experiencing, symptom, experiencing symptoms, uh, haven't had these issues in the past, not a bad idea to go out and get tested just to make sure that you don't have something else that you'd be spreading around. And then the other point I'd like to hit on is uh, a lot of folks ask about uh, juniper trees in general. Uh, there's this really common misconception that they're not native to Texas, which is false. They are a native component of our ecosystem. They've been around longer than we've been here, uh, but we do definitely see an increase in juniper trees uh, because of some of our land management activities. They're growing in areas that used to be grasslands, things like that. So that's why we maybe see more than we necessarily used to, but they are a natural native component of our Texas so we talked about antihistamines and then intranasal steroids, but also just rinsing your nose out with uh, salt water using what's called a neti pot or just a nasal uh, spray. Uh, that salt water um, is that you can buy over the counter is very, very helpful in flushing out and physically removing the pollen. It can be incredibly irritating, uh, but also there are, there are other prescription uh, or other more advanced treatments that are, that are available, including you know, immunotherapy through an allergist. And there's some prescription drugs, something called uh, Montelukast, uh, can be very, very helpful in some people that have particularly difficult to manage uh, disease. So just a few things to say about managing. It's always important to really be vigilant about the symptoms that you have. And if anything seems off or unusual, or even if it actually does seem pretty typical for what you have before, I think for the safety of others around you, it's always to think about whether or not this could possibly be COVID and to get yourself tested.